Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. Welcome back to another home decor update. If you have not been following this series, this is where I'm taking you guys along the entire journey of furnishing my somewhat new home. I moved into this home last summer and I've been working on furnishing, doing some DIY projects, ordering stuff, having some mishaps, redoing some stuff. There's just been a lot along the way and I just kind of wanted to take you guys along for the journey. So here we are with another episode. Now this episode's starts on a bit of a sad note because we did have a catastrophe. So in the last episode, I mentioned that I ordered a really nice light up LED crystal full length mirror for my closet. It's been a while since I've shown my closet, I feel like, so I will insert some footage here of kind of what it looks like. And I had a spot on the wall where I just kind of had this old full length mirror that came from many apartments ago. Actually, that came from my, did it come from my, Honestly, I've had that mirror for years. It's nothing too special about it. It's just a plain white mirror. And with where the mirror goes in my closet, it's kind of dark. The light doesn't really shine in the right direction. And with my shoes lighting up behind me, it made it to where I couldn't really see myself when I was trying on clothes in that mirror. So I said, you know what? I can get a light up mirror. So I searched and searched the internet for a full body light up mirror. And there's only a couple of options from what I saw, but I wanted one that was also gonna be cute and kind of match the glam aesthetic, if you will, of my closet. So I found this one on Impressions Vanity and I do actually have a vanity, like a regular tabletop kind of Hollywood vanity from them already. I got it years ago. I still have it, I still use it every time I do my makeup, love it, haven't had any problems with it, didn't have any problem with the shipping or the delivery. So I felt pretty confident also because it's a very like popular, well-known brand that like everyone orders light up mirrors from. So I went ahead and placed an order for this um, very expensive full body diamond collection crystal light up mirror. Super excited about it. Waited, you know, a couple weeks for it to be delivered. And then finally the delivery man came. He dropped it off, I signed for it. He left it in my garage cause he wasn't allowed to come into my home. And that was it. It's a huge box, huge heavy mirror. So I was like, let me just leave it alone until I can have somebody come over and help me unbox it and bring it into my house. So then one day my mom came over and I was like, hey, can you help me unbox this mirror? But when we unbox the mirror, I'll just let you watch. So my mirror for my closet was delivered the other day. It's from Impressions Vanity. I'm super excited. Hopefully it works out. Y'all just saw how gently we laid that down and it was already, whatever was in there was already like that, rattling around when we tilted it. So we're just gonna stop and open it right here and see what's up. You can see everywhere all over the box, it says fragile, please handle with care. But does it look like this box was handled with care? Look at this box. Oh my God. I haven't even touched it. And the whole box is falling apart. Looks like it's been thrown around. Got puncture holes in it. Plastic is all ripped off. Big old puncture hole right here. Looks like it's coming apart down here. Looks like they literally were throwing it around. Cause as far as I'm concerned, there shouldn't be any assembly. So there shouldn't be any loose pieces in there. It should be all one thing. I don't know what that sounds like. Sounds like broken glass, but I hope it's not. This is a damn mess. A mess. A, oh a total mess. God. I want to cry. I'm so disappointed about this. First of all, the shipping and everything was a mess. So I was a lot of back and forth to even get this delivered in the first place. And now it's finally here and it's completely destroyed and it doesn't even look like it was handled with care at all. And not only that, because obviously I'm getting my money back or I'm getting a refund or an exchange, I better. 
But with stuff like this, I've had this experience before. They don't want to take this back as a return. They don't want to take it off your hands. No junkyard wants to take it. No salvation. You, you can't get rid of stuff like this. Nobody wants to take it from you. You're going to have to pay someone to haul it off. It's like someone jumped in the middle of the package. It's showing right here. Impressions vanity, y'all owe me some money for my for my refund, but also for my pain and suffering and figuring out how to, cause this is a big, heavy mirror. This isn't something that I can just put next to my dumpster for the trash man to pick it up. What am I gonna do with it? Look at this. Wow. It's just even more annoying because I've had such bad experiences with getting stuff, like, I'm sorry, I, I know sh shipping people have a hard job or whatever, and I don't wanna make it seem like I'm generalizing, but almost everything that I order looks like it has been manhandled. It's broken, chipped, damaged, not handled with care, not delivered properly. It's like they're just throwing the boxes in the trunk, throwing them on your front step, and almost everything that I order is broken in some way. I know you guys That's have seen it. Target stuff was broken. Return. The mirrors in my bathroom, my light up mirrors in my bathroom, one of those was chipped. My dining room table was damaged. There's almost everything that I ordered, except for stuff that I've got from Restoration Hardware, which is top, top dollar. That stuff has been handled with care, but any other regular non-luxury store, I've had everything be broken. Not nearly as bad as this in the past. Not even chipped, not even cracked. Busted, destroyed. Looks like somebody did this on purpose. Anyway. Let me figure this out. As you can see, the mirror was completely destroyed. I mean, there's no fixing that. Completely destroyed. And from looking at how like the box looked and how it was dented up, it literally looked like somebody had taken their big old work boot and stomped on it. Like, I don't understand any other way how this type of damage can be done to something when it clearly says fragile. It's like you had one job, but... Mm, Mm. So needless to say, I was extremely disappointed, but not only just disappointed about the fact that like the mirror is broken, I'm not gonna be able to put it up right away like I thought, I'm gonna have to go through this whole process of doing a, you know, getting a new one or getting a refund and then they're gonna have to ship it again, I'm gonna have to wait, you know, that whole thing. But what am I gonna do with the broken mirror? Because um, you can't just put a giant pile of broken glass out on the side of your curb for the trash man to pick it up. That is a liability. They will not pick that up. So I knew it was about to be a hassle and I knew it was about to cost me some money just to get rid of the broken one. Meanwhile, I'm contacting Impressions Vanity, I, and I know I'm going on a whole rant right now, but I am very upset about this and I'm still upset about it to this day because mind you, the mirror was, um, delivered on May, I wanna say like May 5th or something like that. I opened it on May 8th. It is now, as I'm recording this, June 8th. So it has been an entire month. And do I have my mirror? No, I do not. Do I have a refund? No, I do not. Do I have compensation for the fact that I had to pay someone to come and remove the broken one? No, I do not. So I am very annoyed and very upset and very disappointed with Impressions Vanity because like I said, I had had a good experience with them before. I see people order from them all the time, didn't think it was gonna be a problem and it turned out to be a huge hassle. So I literally had to pay someone to come and pick up the broken one and take it to a proper disposal facility, the dump, I don't know where they took it, on top of the cost of the mirror. And I just haven't been able to get in touch with Impressions Vanity. They are very spotty with answering their emails. They say on their website that they are still, you know, answering emails and stuff like that, but they're not answering my emails. They're not answering my DMs. I'm now out over $2,000. This is thousands of dollars we're talking about all together. And I have nothing to show for it. So if I'm not able to rectify the situation with them, I don't know uh, what other mirror I can even order because I shopped around so much and I did not see any other options. So if you guys find any really cute 
or similar light up mirrors, send them my way. Let your girl know, help your girl out. Moving on to actual updates around the house. I thought I was gonna be able to show y'all that, but anyway, little updates around the house is that I did kind of zhuzh up the laundry room a tiny bit. There's still a lot of work to be done in the laundry room, but I went in there and I finished assembling Bougie's cat tree, finally. The cat tree is in this little slot that originally was supposed to have a refrigerator, like a nice, glass front refrigerator that was like my dream to have but then I got bougie and I was like okay I'll just use this space for bougie it's okay I don't really need another refrigerator um, but I had never finished building it or adding the last little piece to his cat tree so I went ahead and did that and then since home goods and stuff is now finally open I took a little trip to home goods I was so excited to finally be able to like go back shopping in store but honestly they didn't have anything it was like wiped clean already like people I guess everyone was itching to go so everything was sold out but the one thing that I did find was this really cute cat tree treat jar so I went ahead and filled that up made that look all cute as you can see bougie be trying to rip open the treat bags and break into them we need to get some more treats but we'll refill it later so this is now bougie's room honestly as well as chilling on top of the washer and dryer i have my painting from my previous vlog it's been a process with this painting as you guys know i tried the fluid art painting it was an epic fail if you didn't see that video go check out that video and then i tried to redo the fluid art also an epic fail so then i just ended up going crazy on the canvas and doing this kind of like scratchy, scrapey, abstract art, like totally different vibe. And I even added a little bit more, I think a little bit more black to it since last time that you guys saw it. Um, and I think this painting is cool. I'm pretty happy with the outcome, but unfortunately when I brought it into my house, it just did not fit. It didn't fit. I was intending to put it over here in the living room. And when I brought it in here, I was like, mm, no. It's a nice painting, but it just doesn't fit the room. So then I brought it in the laundry room and I was like, well, the colors kind of match, like the cooler tone gray matches the cabinets in the laundry room. So I have this big empty wall here. Maybe I'll just end up putting it in here. I don't know, but I'm not so sure about that because I actually am working on designing two things. Number one, a whole built-in tabletop situation for the laundry room. I will insert some pictures here, some inspiration pictures of what I'm talking about. I really want this other side of my laundry room to look as nice as the other side that has all the cabinets and stuff. So I think it would be nice to have like a nice tabletop built-in thing. And then I could even like build in a little custom litter box cubby for bougie so that the litter box is not just like an eyesore maybe add even shelving and cabinetry above as well, but I'm not sure. So if I don't do the cabinetry, then maybe I'll put my artwork up there, but we just have to see. I'm still in the design process of this, so that's gonna be a while before all that is done. But I'm also in the design process of a mud room. It's not a mud room, because it's not a room. It's gonna be in my hallway, but like, um, what is it even called? I honestly don't know. Here are some inspo pictures. Right outside of my laundry room, I wanna do something like this, where you have your cubbies for your shoes or your cabinets, you have your hooks, you can hang your purse and your coat, and this is just kinda of like the landing pad. When you come in from the garage, you drop all your stuff down, and then it kind of like matches the vibe of what's going on in the laundry room. You know, just, you know, more functionality, organization functionality. So those are things that I am working on designing, but, yeah, we have a lot of work to do with that. It's gonna be a custom build, both of them, so I'm gonna have to find a carpenter and all this stuff, so we're not there yet. Other little tiny update is that I finally got my second row of buckets from Ikea for the craft room. So I went ahead and installed those. That was just kind of like the last little finishing touch that I was waiting to be delivered and I'm super happy with it. I think this is a great organization feature to have in there for all of my you know, pens, pencils, paint brushes and all that stuff. And now I am able to get rid of the junky looking random jars and cups that I was using before. And it's just like a nice clean look. 
Again, there's still more stuff that I feel like I can add to the craft room. I'm just not quite sure what yet, but there will probably be another craft room update at some point. And then moving on to the playroom, I did rearrange Zaya's playroom a tiny bit, mostly because we were getting ready to put the chalkboard in. And if you have not seen the entire DIY video that I did for the chalkboard, I took you guys step by step on how we did this custom magnetic six foot by five foot chalkboard in her um, playroom. So in order to prep for that, I had to kind of move stuff around. But in the process, I realized that her little pink kitchen that was over there actually kind of fit the little corner next to the house perfectly and kind of created like an extension of the house, if you will. So I ended up kind of just styling that corner. I had an old mirror from before that I went ahead and mounted up there and just kind of like expanding the whole playhouse, play kitchen vibe into that corner because that corner just wasn't used before. And so then it opened up the whole other wall so that the chalkboard could kind of just be the star of the show on the other other wall as well as I did finally put together her little Ikea kids table. I've had this table sitting here for a while, just never put it together. Finally put this together. Unfortunately, I feel like Zaya is about to grow out of this table already. Like she's getting so tall that she's gonna need like a normal size table pretty soon for any type of like drawing or crafts that she wants to do. But this Ikea table was super cheap. I'll keep it for now, but honestly, I'm probably gonna end up switching it out. I did decide to keep the mint green chairs though. And I think as of right now, I'm going to keep the pink and mint green color scheme along with the white, black, gray natural tones. At first I was thinking that I would just do like a totally kind of neutral, sophisticated palette for the playroom because it's not a closed off space. It's the first thing you see when you walk up the stairs. So I was like, it should be cute. It should kind of match like the vibes of my house. But then I was like, no, it is a playroom. So I feel like it should have some color to it and it should be a little bit more fun. So I decided to keep the pink and the mint green in there. Um, I even think that I should do like an accent wall either behind the chalkboard or behind the house of maybe like some patterned wallpaper or like paint the wall like pink or mint. I don't know, I don't know yet. I don't know, you know how I am with accent walls. I haven't had the best luck with accent walls, so I don't wanna rush into anything, but I have decided to let the playroom have a little bit of color, cause it is a playroom. And then one last random thing that I did in there, the carpet that the playhouse was sitting on was bothering me. And I always had this idea to just cut around it, but then I was like, is that a good idea or is that stupid? But I just went ahead and YOLO'd it and I went ahead and did it because the intention was for the inside of the playhouse to like be carpeted and also have something to sit on so it's just not messing up the actual carpet. But when I bought this little cheap rug from Walmart, I miscalculated the size and the rug ended up being too big and like poking out of the playhouse. And that just always bothered me, like the way that that looked. It just looked a little busy with like the other real rug in the room and then the carpet and then that rug and then I don't know I just didn't like it so I grabbed myself an exacto knife and a pair of scissors and I just started cutting around like the border of the house just to kind of mimic the effect of the house being carpeted but you can't see it from the outside and it actually turned out pretty well I didn't have any problems with it it was pretty easy to cut through again this was just a super cheap little rug from Walmart anyway so I'm not you know didn't have to take a big risk with it and it turned out pretty good and I think it looks much more just clean from the outside now um, I am considering switching out the pink rug that's in there I don't know, I'm not sure yet. I'm still kind of confused with my color palette and the whole vibe of the room. I know I wanna add curtains. I know I need some bookshelves for all of her books. I'm just having trouble finding what I'm looking for because I'm also having a lot of trouble finding inspiration pictures. So I'm kind of making it up off the top of my head and that can be a little bit hard. Okay, so I know that all those updates were like really small except for the chalkboard, which you guys have already seen in the other video. But just with the pandemic and everything, I've been, you know, not focused on decorating my house, not really been able to go shopping in store, having trouble obviously with ordering stuff and having bad luck. So I just haven't made too much progress over the past month. But one thing that I did make progress with and one thing that I am excited and proud of is actually this baby right here, this painting that is behind me. I finally 
truly made a painting that I like, that I actually have hung up in my house after all this. My original intention with all the paintings that I've been trying is to fill up this empty wall in my dining area right here behind me and also the empty wall over in my living room. At least get one of those spots filled up. So I was determined. So I went to Michael's and I bought the largest canvas that they sell. And then I was super inspired by this YouTube video that I came across of this girl creating a really nice textured canvas using spackle. And I was like, oh my God, that is so smart because I've been trying to get texture using acrylic paint alone. And the first time I did it, the paint just crumbled and cracked and it was a mess. And the second time I did it, it just wasn't giving me the result that I wanted. And I was like, she is so smart spackle so then i got the spackle got the canvas and then i had some matte white paint and some matte black paint because i decided for this one i need to keep it simple white and black that's it i'm not doing all the grays and the mixing and the golds and the sort no i wanted something super simple super minimal and abstract and these were my inspiration photos these are from you guessed it restoration hardware where i get all of my main home inspo from i love looking at their online catalogs they just have the most beautiful images on their online catalogs of all these stylized rooms with different vibes and different color schemes. I mean, not really a lot of different color schemes because most of all their stuff is neutral, which is why I like them. But every time I see their catalog, they have these super minimal abstract paintings in them. And I'm like, that is the vibe that I need for my house. F the fluid painting, poor paint. No, we gonna do something totally different. I went to work first with the spackle. So I bought the little spackle scraper thingy and everything. And basically I just went ahead and scooped some out and started just spreading it across the canvas, purposefully trying to make it lumpy and purposefully trying to kind of create like lines in it and just like get that like thick texture to it. Super random, no rhyme or reason to it, but just trying to get like an overall texture all over the whole entire canvas to kind of give it the effect of like when you see like an oil painting or any sort of like really nice professional painting, a lot of times it has like that thick paint look to it. And so that's kind of the vibe that I was trying to get. Now this spackle was kind of like a beige color. It didn't dry white or anything. I think they do make spackle that dries white, but I was happy with this because I didn't want the background of my painting to just be like stark white. I didn't want it to just look like a giant piece of printer paper. I didn't want it to be too flat. When you look at my inspo pictures, it has texture, it has depth, it has slightly different variations of white, slight, you know? So because I wanted to mimic that texture and that depth, I was happy with the fact that the spackle was actually kind of a beige color. And then when I got my matte white paint, I actually mixed in a little bit of ivory paint just to kind of make it not so bright white. And then I kind of loosely, like lightly, painted over the spackle once it was completely dry with my little mixture of paint. So it gave me a white background, but not like super solid, super bright white. So I was super happy with how this first kind of step turned out. But then came the hard part, which was the black brush strokes. And so I compiled a whole bunch of inspiration photos of different styles of brush strokes. You can make it really swirly, really circular, really straight, really like linear. And it almost looks like tree branches. And I decided to kind of go for a mix of everything, just something super random and super abstract, more so like the restoration hardware picture. And so then I took this huge paintbrush, dipped it in the matte black paint and literally just like I was so scared I was gonna like make it look ugly and actually I did kind of mess up I put some strokes on there that I didn't really like that kind of just looked out of place and so I ended up letting it dry and spackling over it to cover it up and painting over it with the white so it's actually fairly easy to like fix any mistakes or just kind of go back and layer it up and just make it look how I wanted it to look so this is actually a very forgiving style of artwork you really can't mess it up because everything is so random so abstract you can layer it up you can paint over if you mess up so if you guys like this style of art i actually do recommend that you try it it's really not hard at all and i think it gave a very like nice like 
like I don't know how to explain it. I feel like it doesn't really look DIY. Like it really looks like the real thing. It looks like this could cost thousands of dollars in a gallery. Like I'm very proud of myself. The one thing that I think is missing and that I think would set it off, and I've been saying this about all my paintings, is if I could put a frame on it. The ones from Restoration Hardware have like a thin black frame on it. Some of them have gold frames. I think I would put like a black frame on here, but that would be another custom element that I would have to either figure out how to do the framing myself or pay for it to be framed and that's gonna be super expensive. So that's a whole nother thing that I still need to revisit. I do think that that would really like just you know, clean it up though. But even besides that, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It is the exact like vibe that I wanted. And I think it looks really similar to the Restoration Hardware one. And even if I decide that I kind of want to switch it up down the line, I can always like layer it up and add more to it or take more away. So I'm really happy with this style of art. I think I will attempt another one or like a similar one for the other area in my living room that's still desperately needs something on the wall. But yeah, guys, that's it. I know I didn't really have like too many super big exciting updates for this video, but just like I said, with the pandemic and everything, things have just kind of been slowed down, but that is the progress that I was able to make. I still wanted to share it with you guys. Of course, I have so much more planned. Like I said, with the laundry room, the mud room, I have to do my landscaping outside, my whole backyard vibe. I have just so much to do. It's actually kind of overwhelming, but that just means that there's gonna be more episodes for you guys to watch so i hope you guys are enjoying this series if you are make sure to give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss the next update and i will see you guys in my next one bye